Thank you, Ben, for introducing us. And I hope you've been enjoying the Things Conference Spring Global so far. Uh, my name is Felix. I'm Resh. Uh, we're from the commercial team at the Things Industries, and we're going to cover deployment options today. Before we dive into options, Rish, what are we actually deploying? Yeah, I think it's good to first understand, yeah, what are we talking about when it comes to deployment? Uh, so let's take a look at any LoRaWAN use case. You have four main components. You have your end device. So here is an example of an end device. This is a generic node. You have the gateways, LoRaWAN gateways. Here's an indoor gateway that we have. And the third component is the network server, which is what we're going to talk about, how to deploy that. And the fourth component is the application server, which typically you use it for dashboards or you use it for visualization or analytics. But what we're talking about here is the network server. So by now, I'm sure you know what a network server does. And in this session, we're going to talk about what are the different options when it comes to deploying it and which one is suitable for which scenarios. I'm sure if you've been on the website, all of you have maybe had a look. Uh, there are different deployment options listed. We've done some branding on it. So we talked there about cloud and enterprise. Could you help us map this a bit? Like what, yeah. what are this, what is behind these names? Yeah, so when you talk about uh, yeah, deploying the network server, there are two main ways of deploying this network server. The first one is called a managed service and the second one is called self-managed service. So the main difference, as you can tell, between managed and self-managed is who has access to the infrastructure, who is managing that, and this is how we differentiate these two options. So what you see on the website, you have the ThinkStack Cloud, and you see the ThinkStack Enterprise. So ThinkStack Cloud is part of a managed service where we, as the Things Industries, we host the stack, the network server on our infrastructure, and you or any other customer, they use the service as it is. So this becomes like your typical SaaS model where the software runs in the cloud, uh, of, on the vendor's cloud, and you or any other customer, they just use the service as it is. There are different ways of payment which you can see on the website. So this is covered under managed service. And then you have the second part, which is the ThinkStack Enterprise, that's part of self-managed service, where the customer, they run the stack on their own infrastructure. Now, this own infrastructure can be their own cloud, can also be locally on the site, or can also be on gateway. So there are different options. For most of our customer base, they run the network server in their own cloud or on their own local machines. So that's the second way of running the network server. What we really wanted to cover as well is if uh, you're getting started, right? Like now, so we have, we know now what is the network server. Uh, it's the think stack. We can deploy it as a managed or self-managed uh, service. Another question is we are getting a lot is uh, how do you get started? Uh, what What's actually the better way to get started? So from our experience, we would advise you uh, to start always with a managed service, even though for the later deployment, like when, when you really roll out your use case, uh, the self a uh, managed service might be the better option. There are a lot of criteria which we can cover in a bit. But if you start first with a managed service, and of course we believe in that this is a sustainable model to, to use later for, for your production deployment, but for your proof of concept, for your first uh, prototyping, start with a managed service. It allows you to uh, shift a lot of the responsibilities to us at the Things Industries. We make sure everything runs. We make sure everything works from one registered device and one registered gateway up to thousands or even 10,000s of devices uh, and you don't have to worry about that part of managing the things uh, stack or the LoRaWAN network server. And then later, if the requirements of your project, and that is very much not a what is better, but is what is the requirements around your project, then you can still uh, migrate uh, to a self-managed service or you figured out that the managed service is actually the more viable version uh, for you to, to proceed with. And because it's both the thing stack, it is quite easy to migrate between different versions. So you're not, not locked in at all and our team uh, can, can help and assist in how to migrate between uh, different versions as you need them. What requirements do you think uh, would warrant that you have to use a self-managed uh, service? Like, uh, yeah. I think a lot of times also people like have this misconception that running it on premise or running it in, on their own infrastructure has certain advantages over the other or running it in cloud has certain advantages. But maybe if you, uh, can you describe some examples of what misconceptions do you see generally uh, when customers comes, comes to you and ask you these questions? What are their misconceptions and 
how would you demystify them? Setup is a huge topic. Like if you have a self-managed service, you will have to set up your infrastructure for it. You have to install it, you have to maintain it. You need staff to respond to issues, maybe even on a weekend. So there is a certain overhead, uh, which comes with uh, having a self-managed service. The upsides would be, of course, it is in your infrastructure. Um, so you have like control over the actual machine. And uh, the opposite side would be that, yeah, for a cloud service, we take care of all of that. You still have uh, our service level agreement, uh, which which protect all the interests which you would have. But in, in these cases, still confidentiality is given, security is given. All these aspects are taken care of by contract by us, while you would have that responsibility of doing it for a self-managed service. So there is a bit of like one corner myth, which we get as a question a lot is, uh, if I use the cloud, which is one big infrastructure which multiple companies are using, can they actually see my traffic? That's a clear no. Like you have your tenant, so you have your private version of uh, the uh, ThinkStack as a tenant in the cloud infrastructure. Every message from the device uh, via the gateway to the network server and to your application is end-to-end -end encrypted. There are different levels of encryption. You're welcome to, to uh, reach out or drop a message here in the chat and we can answer questions on, on the different levels of encryption or security. But uh, the short answer is your tenant is your tenant. Nobody can look at it. And to be honest, there is uh, us and our infrastructure service, which both full-time invest into keeping these services up and running. So we focus on this full-time. Well, for you, it would be one task on the to-do list. Yeah, it definitely answers some of these pressing questions that a lot of people have. What would you uh, say as a, like a last piece of advice for someone who's looking to get started? What's their uh, next step? Uh, yeah, how do right. they get started? We were grappling a bit like how can we get the best access to get started? So we've had like, uh, yeah, you get these requests. Can I have a test tenant? And later we move to a production tenant. We've actually made it now completely free to use your fully featured tenant. There are some limits on how many devices and gateways you can register on it, but you can set up on our cloud version, on the ThinkStack cloud, you can set up your discovery tier and you can get started within a few minutes. And that is already your tenant, which you would also use if you then later just decide to deploy 50,000 devices. So you set it up uh, on your discovery plan for free. And once everything is working and you sign the first customers, there is some revenue you are generating and then you can upgrade to our normal uh, services and you can scale as you want and we take care of the rest. Thanks Felix for uh, clarifying about uh, all the different deployment options. If you have any questions drop us a line we are happy to help. Enjoy the rest of the conference.